Coming up, the NTSB's most wanted list is out. What they want to see in GA. Plus, a box to track all your flight data. And a box to save your life. We dive into AOA. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. This is AOPA Live This Week with Alyssa Cobb and Paul Harrop filling in for Tom Haynes. The NTSB has gone a little too far. That's the opinion of the AOPA Air Safety Institute. The National Transportation Safety Board this week released its top 10 list of most wanted safety improvements. Specifically, charter flights and so-called Part 91 passenger revenue flights like sightseeing, parachute jumping and heritage flight in classic aircraft and warbirds. The Office of Aviation Safety proposes one safety item. Require and verify the effectiveness of safety management systems in all revenue passenger carrying aviation operations. What the NTSB wants is a safety management system in place for every air operation where there's a paying passenger, regardless of how small the business might be. This SMS would be approved and monitored by the FAA. And while absolute risk-free safety is an admirable goal, the Air Safety Institute says this recommendation is just too much for the real world. We support SMS programs. I mean, they have proven safety benefits when they're applied appropriately, like so much in aviation. And in this case, I think the NTSB just reached too broadly and their recommendation indicates that they don't have a full appreciation for the types and the scale of operations that happen under revenue carrying, you know, part 91 and part 135. By the way, we don't, we don't really even support it for all part 135 operations because if you look at the scale and the types of operations that go on under part 135, and especially Part 91 revenue of uh, passenger carrying, they, they, it's, a, it's a wide variety of operations and to require all of them to implement an SMS program and then further the NTSB wants the FAA to monitor that. The FAA doesn't have the bandwidth to do that and it just wouldn't be, uh, it, it wouldn't show the kind of safety benefits that would indicate that kind of uh, regulatory oversight. McSpadden had previously sent a letter to the NTSB explaining why the recommendation went too far for the real world of general aviation operations. But that doesn't mean he's opposed to the concepts behind a safety management system. What ASI developed was this thing called a scalable safety framework. And through the scalable safety framework, what we did was we took an SMS program. So we have somebody in ASI that's uh, educated and trained in SMS programs. and um, we took an SMS program and we sort of developed a framework where if you're a Part 91 or even just a, uh, a public benefit flying, any kind of flying organization, you can take our framework and build an SMS type program that works for your operation. So we certainly encourage that. The difference is mandating that and mandating FAA oversight of that. You know, that's where uh, that's where the challenge comes for us. You can find more about the Scalable Safety Framework on our website. Well, the past year was challenging, but the future looks bright. That was one of the main takeaways at the FAA's General Aviation Safety Town Hall. AOPA President Mark Baker joined the discussion with several other industry leaders to share his thoughts. You know, General Aviation has weathered this pretty well. There's still lots to be learned about flight training, as you uh, offered and supported at the FAA about extensions on uh, and all the medical needs and other things. It was important for us to figure that out and work together. And largely the outcome has been safe growth and I think long-term permanent. So we're going to see a growth in general aviation use and activity. You can watch the full town hall on the FAA YouTube channel. Some bad news for the Warbird flight training industry. The FAA decided not to lift a cease and desist order against Warbird Adventures. The flight school offered flight training in a Curtis P-40 in Warhawk before the FAA ordered them to stop. The FAA alleged that the company was operating a limited category aircraft for compensated flight training without the required exemption. 
AOPA and five other aviation organizations had filed a friend of the court brief in the case in support of Warbird Adventures. AOPA is disappointed by the FAA's decision. It departs from a long-standing premise that a flight instructor is compensated for instruction, not for piloting the aircraft. Warbird Adventures is in Kissimmee, Florida and offers flight training in a variety of aircraft, including T-6 Texans. There are a lot of ways to support the future of general aviation. One way is through the AOPA Foundation's Legacy Society. This week, we had a virtual Legacy Society induction ceremony to welcome our new Legacy Society members. Their names were added to the Legacy Court at AOPA headquarters in Frederick, Maryland. With Legacy Giving, you include a gift to the AOPA Foundation in your will or trust, or make the Foundation a beneficiary of your retirement account or life insurance policy. This wall is going to be here for a great long time. Uh, I'm pleased to be part of it. Uh, I encourage all of you to think about it, how it can be part of your estate planning at whatever age, whether it's a dollar or more, it doesn't matter. Being part of the future of aviation and what matters to future aviators as they come along, being part of this, really special. Many join the Legacy Society as a way to recognize all that general aviation means to them. My wife and I have spent time talking about what matters to us. And aviation is one of the most important things in my life. So what's the What's the one thing I can do to ensure to the best of my ability that the generation coming behind me has the same opportunity? And that is invest, and invest is the key word. And the organizations that are committed and dedicated to preserving GA, and there's nobody, nobody more dedicated, more committed, or works harder than AOPA to ensure the future of GA. Nobody. The AOPA Foundation supports important initiatives like the You Can Fly program and AOPA Air Safety Institute. Find out more about legacy giving at the AOPA Foundation website. Sun and fun is right around the corner. The spring break for pilots, as it's known, runs next week from April 13th through the 19th. The subtropical aviation extravaganza takes place at Lakeland Linder International Airport in Central Florida. The air show is set to be a hit with the United States Navy Blue Angels headlining the week. Many other terrific acts in there as well. Now, while the aerial display and sunshine will feel like usual, there are some changes you may notice due to COVID. Masks are going to be required in areas where social distancing can't be achieved. That's places like exhibit hangers, ticket lines, guest shuttles and the like. Many exhibit Exhibitors are also pivoting their presence a bit, including AOPA. We will be there, but it will feel a little bit different than years past. We've moved all of our AOPA employees engaging the public and hanging out with our friends in the industry. We've moved all of us outside around an aircraft display. So we'll be able to enjoy the sunshine, be out in the, in the breeze and so forth. And so it's a team of ambassadors that will be there to greet you and, and talk about all things uh, aviation related. They will have collectible stickers for your car or airplane and on those will be discount codes for you to get the show discount rates on all the transactions you normally do in person at our tent like membership renewals, pilot protection services upgrades and retail transactions. Now you still get the hookup and you can still take care of all of that, but now online at your convenience. Now one thing that will stay the same, the great content and programming you know from AOPA. And then the indoor component of our event will be an open-sided programming pavilion where we'll have, uh, as we have done every year, uh, really quality educational content from many different friends and, and partners in the industry, as well as our own Air Safety Institute and You Can Fly teams will be presenting. So all day long, um, Tuesday through Saturday, uh, just a wonderful slate of uh, content uh, programs that will be available there in a program pavilion to include our ever popular Rusty Pilots uh, seminar, uh, daily content from the Air Safety Institute, a lot of cool stuff that we're hoping that you guys will come and, and, and check out. So a bit different, but still a quality presence. And if like me, you're not able to make it to the event, follow along on AOPA's social media pages for real time coverage. And don't forget, you can listen in all week to Sun and Fun Radio's live stream. That's on liveatc.net. Just search for the airport identifier K. L -A -L. Alyssa, I'm a little bummed I'm not going to be at Sun and Fun this year. It's one of my favorite events of the year, but uh, we've got a good team down there and going to provide some pretty real-time coverage for it. That's right. I, I'm bummed I also won't be there this year. It's uh, usually the first thing I look forward to every spring, but we'll be bringing all the news from the show. We'll be having a special edition of our weekly e-pilot newsletter on Tuesday, so 
members who are going or not going, you're going to be able to still enjoy the fun whether you're home or there. Well, and Sun and Fun is a great place to check out the latest and greatest gadgets for your airplane. Garmin just released new panel-mounted USB chargers. The GSB-15 now comes with USB-C as an option. It's small enough to fit in a one-inch cutout and enough power to charge two full-size tablets. The new models cost $399. And if you're looking for an upgrade to your aircraft lighting, there's a new product from Aero LEDs. The new Sunspot Equinox is a dual function LED landing and taxi light. Now the beam width of the light changes to a narrower beam for landing and a wider beam for taxi. The company says the new light will improve visibility on the ground. Now in the air, it can be seen from up to 30 miles away. Now, as you make your way around Sun and Fun uh, to the exhibitors, don't miss AirSync. The company makes a device to track your flight data and other information about your airplane. AOPA technical editor Jill Tallman shows us how it works. Hey Siri, how much fuel is in Kilo Romeo? There are 30 gallons of fuel in N726KR. Siri telling you how much fuel is in your airplane? It's possible thanks to AirSync. AirSync is a cloud-based service that gives pilots easy access to all kinds of data about their airplane, flight times, fuel on board, aircraft location, real-time engine data, and more. So AirSync is, is really bringing aviation into the 21st century. AirSync works using two simple components, an SD card that is installed in the multifunction display, and a cellular-enabled bridge that can be installed in the center console between the pilot and co-pilot seats. We use the AirSync bridge and SD card to actually connect the aircraft to the cloud, to pull the data off the plane and put it up to the cloud. Uh, from there, uh, the user can consume that data via an app, so we have an iPhone app, uh, or the web. AirSync is compatible with most newer GA airplanes with Garmin panels. So if you have an aircraft that's been built in, in the la about the last 10 years, give or take, uh, you have like a Garmin G1000 or a 3000 or, or something like a G3X, so this kind of platforms is very likely that we are compatible with your aircraft. All the access to aircraft data makes life easier for individual owners who don't want to have to manually log all the aircraft times. But it's especially beneficial for fleet operators. Charter operators, uh, airplane management companies, flight schools are always running around from airplane to airplane trying to figure out uh, the proper flight times, the hops meter and the TAC meter, checking fuel levels, making sure all that is correct. So we usually have ops people running around doing all that. With AirSync, we're able to, with a click of a button, look directly at each individual airplane that we have in the system. So it's invaluable from an operation standpoint. AirSync will also alert users if a pilot exceeds critical engine parameters, like running the engine too hot. The hardware kit is $795 with one year of service included, then $200 per aircraft per year for the entry level service. Jill Tallman, AOPA Live. You can find the full list of compatible aircraft at the AirSync website. Well, coming up, the donut could save your bacon. And the latest space plane from Virgin Galactic. Meet Spaceship 3 in just a moment. Welcome back. It's got massive tail fins and is dripping in chrome. No, it's not a 59 Caddy, but rather the Virgin Spaceship Imagine. The airframe of VSS Imagine is nearly identical to sister ship Unity. Richard Branson says the application of chrome is to make the aircraft shine brighter in the sun, reflecting enough light to make it observable by earthbound children who may watch the launches to come. Now the rollout of Imagine comes before next month's flight of Unity with a full crew. After that, Branson will finally get to ride aboard his creation, getting a taste of suborbital space. Paying flights are expected to open in 2022. 
And speaking of sleek futuristic aircraft, Lilium just unveiled a new seven passenger EV toll. They're calling it a jet. It uses ducted electric vectored thrust technology. The company says it will cruise at 175 miles an hour at 10,000 feet with a range of more than 155 miles. The seven seater will be Lilium's first aircraft to go into serial production. Lilium is also going public after a merger with Quell Acquisition Corp. While many EV toll companies are focused on super short hop transportation within cities, Lilium is pursuing regional transportation. Well, a milestone for Cessna, the company just rolled out the 600th Citation CJ3. The CJ3 family is the industry's best-selling jet series. The Citation line continues to lead the light jet segment with more than 5,000 CJs delivered. And over at Piper, there's a new acting CEO. John Calcagno is stepping in to lead the company. He replaces Simon Caldicott, who recently retired after more than 10 years leading Piper. Calcagno has extensive business experience and served as CFO for Piper for the past 11 years. And another honor for the Tuskegee Airmen, the venerated group of black fighter pilots and mechanics from World War II, are this year's recipient of the Clifford Henderson Trophy. The Henderson Trophy is awarded by the National Aeronautic Association. It awards those whose vision, leadership, or skill made a significant and lasting contribution to the promotion and advancement of aviation and aerospace in the United States. Planning a trip soon? Well, good news if you're fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The CDC says fully vaccinated travelers within the U.S. no longer need to get tested or self-quarantine as long as they're not sick. Now, international travel is still not recommended, and there are stringent testing requirements in place whether you are vaccinated or not. All the CDC rules apply for flying GA and for the airlines. Stay up to date with all the COVID-19 related travel restrictions on our website. Flying into a busy and complicated new airport can be a bit daunting. The FAA has a video series to help you navigate safely. The From the Flight Deck videos show pilots' actual runway approach and taxiway footage captured with cameras in the cockpit. That video is combined with diagrams and graphics to clearly identify hotspots and other safety-sensitive items. You can find the videos at the link there on your screen. Well, angle of attack indicators can be a valuable safety tool in the cockpit, and they are becoming more common in general aviation. But how do you use one, and what do they really tell you? CFI Lawrence Balter demonstrates a landing using AOA as the primary instrument. What is angle of attack? Why is it so important? For generations, we have been teaching pilots to use the airspeed indicator. It's the only proxy of an instrument that we have to know what the wing is doing. The problem is airplanes can stall at any airspeed. So what we need is an instrument to tell us what is the health of the wing. How close are we to losing our lift? The leading cause of general aviation accidents, 60% is loss of control. So what I'm looking for now essentially is a half blue donut uh, on the final and a short final to the blue donut. I am not watching the airspeed indicator. I could care less about airspeed. Airspeed is a byproduct. Airspeed is energy. AOA is lift. And all I'm concerned about is lift. So I always ask the same question when a pilot that has never flown angle of attack to come sit down with me and we talk about it. And I say, what is 1.3 VSO for your airplane? And they all kind of have to either make a calculation or, you know, they've been taught a certain speed to fly. The problem is the speeds that they're given in the books and in the manuals are always at maximum gross weight in 1G environment. So if we look at what angle of attack does, 1.3 VSO really corresponds to what we call the blue donut. So you can see I'm just kind of flirting with the blue to a half blue, which is fine. Remember, AOA is... The, the blue donut is irrespective of the weight of the airplane. It's irrespective of density altitude. And it's always going to be the same angle of attack. We are at the sweet spot right now. Now, if you could see my vertical speed, you'll see that we're between 300 and 400 feet per minute descent rate. The wind's shifting a little bit, staying on center line. All right, and I'm just bringing the power off. And then the key is the transition, the rollout. See, I'm in ground effect right now, and there's the blue donut, okay? And it's telling me, hey, I'm getting a little bit slow. And then we just bring it in nice and gentle. And there we go. That's it. You can find more flying technique videos on our YouTube channel. 
Well, that's our show for this week. If you're with us there on YouTube, like, comment, and ring the bell to subscribe. <laughs> you can also send us an email to the address on your screen. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. My name's Tom Rao. I've got about 18,000 hours total time as a pilot. There's certain things that you can see with an onboard radar, uh, and there's certain things you can't see. And the nice thing about SiriusXM's weather product is that it adds another layer uh, of safety, which you know really plays into the aeronautical decision-making process for me. It, it allows me to get a more strategic, big picture when I'm going to go uh, seven or 800 miles. You know, just facilitates decision-making on a long-range spectrum. The Sirius XM weather features that, that I engage in the airplane, of course there, there's a selection. The wind feature and the ability to work out uh, route changes with center to take advantage of the wind is sort of a carryover from my airline days or in the Navy when we always felt like we didn't have enough gas. So being able to make gas literally by shortening its segment length, the, the wind feature, is, it's invaluable. The number of dollars saved as a result, I, I just don't think I can calculate it.